Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Helped my wife transition and now she calls me some dyke and files for divorce. Nor. I never imagined I would end up married to a woman. When I met the person who is now my wife, who I am going to call Paula because that is not and has never been her real name, she was a man, who I am going to call Paul for the same reasons. Two years into dating, Paul told me he was bi. Two years after we were married, Paul came out as trans and chose the name Paula for herself. I am not going to pretend that Paula's transition was easy for her or me, because it was not. There are people who will say it would not make the slightest bit of difference to them if their spouse or partner suddenly transitioned, and there are people for whom that is even true, but I am not one of them. But I have tried, God damn it, I am trying. I went to couples therapy with her, I went to her own therapy sessions when she asked, I got a therapist of my own. I read books, I reached out to other people with similar experiences, I stood by her when her family and people who'd been friends pushed back, spoke out against my friends and family's transphobic comments when they came up. I stared dumbly as three different therapists heard my story, tut tutted, and called me bigoted to my face and said I needed to either get on board or get divorced. So I got on board. We burn our wedding album because she couldn't bear to look at her past self in a tux. And I did so, so much more, and I am not saying that because I want or expect any kind of kudos and I do not for one second imagine that, relative to other cis spouses of other trans people, I have done anything noteworthy or had a more difficult than usual time of it. But, I ducking, tried, and I did it because, while the person I loved was no longer a man, she was still the person I loved. And I did all of it while strangers and people I loved attacked me for being the transphobic one if I ever expressed a moment of shock, a moment of hesitation or uncertainty, or a moment of oh my god, this is a lot of change all at once, can I please sit down for even one minute so I literally don't collapse from the panic attack I am literally having literally right now. And then, this week, at 10.45 am on a Tuesday, there's a man in a suit and a Hippler haircut at my cubicle, handing me a stack of papers that say separation agreement on the top. He's whisper shouting at me that I need to sign right now or there will be consequences, and he will not agree to take this to a private conference room away from the looky loos. I tell him to wait while I call my wife, and she lets out a long, exasperated sigh when she picks up. I tell her about Hippler and she says he's legit and, with one sentence, does her level best to tear my heart out and throw it into a fire. I just can't stay married to some ducking dyke, she said. And when I came home, all of my things were packed in suitcases by the front door and so very many of our friends were there to support her. I think it's easier this way, she said. She works from home, you see. Totally logical. So she gets my support, our house, and our friends, and I get called some ducking dyke and thrown out on the street by a gang of people champing at the bit to dogpile on me if I am anything less than 1000% supportive of the person harassing me at work and kicking me out of my own home. Wow, that is just wrong. I am so sorry that you were used and betrayed like that. The fact you supported the change and then she bit you like that. If you need someone to vent to please reach out to me I am pretty much always available. That's so shitty. I'm sorry she used you like that and basically destroyed your life. I hope you find a better counselor and build a happy life for yourself. Tuck your former spouse and so called friends. Go in you for trying, now move on and take care of yourself. Best of luck. What a complete sociopath. I'm so sorry. I was thinking the same thing. Whenever I read a story like this I wonder what hellhole those so-called friends crawled out of. I couldn't even imagine for a second not being supportive of someone going through such a traumatic experience. Duck that. Wow. What a punch in the gut. I cannot even imagine what you must be feeling. 
I have two female friends whose husbands transitioned to female, both ended up divorced, and both struggled with it. That's a tough, complicated thing, and I think it's perfectly okay for you to have a struggle with it. It doesn't make you transphobic, all change is hard and there should have been a grieving period for you, so you could grieve the life you thought you had, and figure out how to embrace the changes. Jesus, girl, this ex of yours sounds toxic as duck. Good riddance. Holy. Ducking. Shit. Just. Sending huts across the universe, as that's all I can do. Duck her. The insult doesn't even make sense. If she's sending you papers, you may never find out what the deal is. Could be she was using you, or her hormone therapy is really screwing with her emotions. Either way, you got the shitty end of this stick and I'm so sorry. So sorry you're going through this. It's wild to me that someone could try and say you're bigoted when you tried to make the marriage work and you clearly, from the language you use, are supportive of trans people. You went into your marriage believing you were marrying a man. It's reasonable for you to have a difficult time adjusting to finding out that your husband is actually a woman, especially if you identify as a straight woman, yourself. And even if you were into women as well, that doesn't mean you have to be okay with having a romantic relationship with a trans woman. There are a lot of extra considerations to be made when being romantically involved with a trans person. Not everyone is built to handle that, and that is okay. It doesn't make them bigoted, it just makes them incompatible. I don't want to be that person but were those therapists legit? Because every hetero couple I've known who had one of them transition, the therapist would always tell the trans individual to try and give time and space for the other spouse to process because while you've basically known your whole life that you're trans, your partner didn't. I wish you best and I hope you move on from those people because that is very harmful and toxic and for your partner to have literally thrown all of this on you in one day. That's some shitty shit. I hope you're able to grow and love again and not turn bitter. Not for anyone but yourself because it sucks being bitter. It sucks like there's no tomorrow. And I know you love her still because she's the person you fell in love with, but if she tries to win you back please don't. I have no idea what it's like to be in your exact situation but my ex told everyone lies about me about how I was mean and verbally abusive when actually he's the one who was and I lost all of my friends I had through him and it was hard when people were supporting him to break up with me when he did it so he could sleep with a girl and a week later tried to get me back. I was stupid and did it. It ended just like the first time. Just because someone is trans doesn't mean they can't be homophobic and an asshole. Sorry you had to go through that, best of luck for the future. Go live your best life. You. Deserve. Better. I can't imagine. If my boyfriend suddenly decided he wanted to become a woman I wouldn't be able to do what you have. There is nothing wrong with staying with her, and there would have been nothing wrong if you didn't. However, you looked past the outward appearance of Paula and endured what so many couldn't all because of love. You are much stronger than most. I commend you for your strength in this situation. You sound like a very selfless, loving person. I'm so sorry. I hope this awful situation brings something better and wonderful into your life and you eventually meet someone who loves you as unconditionally as you have loved Paula. I am so sorry you went through that. You didn't deserve this. I hope things get better for you less than three. This makes my blood boil. Sorry you're going through this. I went through something similar. The whole, this is who I am, I'm following my bliss, keeping your word is for chumps. You just can't hang. Thing is just heartbreaking and enraging. I would like to launch my ex directly into the Sunday may we both get on with our lives and find better people. I am so, so dearly sorry that this has happened to you. I see that your intentions are genuine, and I'm sorry that they can't see that. I'm sorry that they turned their backs on you, and I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and not them. A person transitioning while in a long-term relationship can be very shocking for the other partner, and it would have been okay even if you did walk away. I appreciate the efforts that you put in to understand her. I'm sorry that you're hurting. While my experience isn't yours, 
I'm going through a heartbreaking situation with my friends as well, one where I've been isolated because I finally stood up for myself and they realized that they no longer had control of me. I feel your pain and while I don't have any advice, I truly hope that you heal from the hurt you may be experiencing. What? My mouth literally fell open at how completely callous she is being. I am so sorry. What the actual duck? I am so ducking sorry. What a selfish user. She ducking used you to make her transition smooth. And then used you as a ducking scapegoat for the problems that weren't magically solved when she transitioned. And then she threw it all in your ducking face. I am so sorry. I honestly hope nothing but the worst for this person. I hope the life you build after this is behind you is full of all that brings you happiness. You deserve to be happy. You deserve to have a partner who supports you as you supported your ex. Navigating estates, tenancy, discrimination, and grief in North Carolina. North Carolina, landlord slash tenant, estates, discrimination, TW, suicide preamble, my partner, mask NB, and I, cis M, are poly, which I understand will be a deal breaker for many people here. If you are one of them, please move on and do not add to the dog pile that is our lives, thanks. And thank you to everyone for reading my late night ramblings and inquiries. Background, partner and I met our beloved, MTF, almost a year ago, this Thursday would have been our one year anniversary. At the time, she had just started working again, was just coming off of her probationary period, and was still shackled to her spouse, joyless sisf. We, partner, beloved, and I, proceeded carefully and discreetly with our courtship, because for the first months beloved was still wholly dependent on her spouse's insurance to cover prescriptions and procedures, but once beloved was secure, recovered from surgery, and cleared to WFH full time we started seriously considering our futures together. Beloved ultimately agreed that the honest thing to do would be to divorce her spouse, so with the help of some of Beloved's friend's partner and I broke the news to her spouse, served her with papers, packed up her things in the nicest suitcases she had, and helped her move out and move us in. I wish this were simply a catty story with a happy ending, or even no ending at all. But life and love are never so easy, as I'm sure all of us here know first hand. Beloved's spouse refused to agree to our terms, refused to even sign the papers partner hand delivered to her. I am grateful we had so many people with us when she came to our house, because I fear she would have turned violent without them, and those are both just from the first day. She hired a lawyer to fight the divorce, a no-fault divorce, at that, and demanded beloved by her own house back from her, blood money. This was after she had abandoned it, let me remind you. Beloved's spouse refused to budge, refused to settle, refused to negotiate, barely restrained her contempt in talking to us, and I'm sure it was no coincidence that whenever her lawyer dead named Beloved, she very begrudgingly corrected him, as if to claim she was some woke AF princess of power rather than the frigid soul who had hired that troglodyte to begin with. Her virtue signaling didn't end there either, as the months wore on, she held every mortgage payment she made above us, as though it were some kind of moral victory or virtue signaling rather than her paying for the house she supposedly wanted us to buy from her so desperately. Beloved did not handle the stress well. At all. I suspect, but cannot prove, that this is what her spouse had intended all along. On Friday May 1st, while partner and I were making another trip to move our things over from the old apartment, Beloved died by suicide. Before her body was even scarcely cold, her spouse had swooped in, claimed the body, and had her burned. A week later, she snuck to our house and taped a notice to quit to our door claiming that she was suddenly our landlord now and that we owed her rent, for a house she had previously demanded we buy from her. While the partner was on hold with legal aid, I checked the mail and saw an identical notice in a certified mail envelope. We burned that one, it seemed fitting. My friends, partner and I find ourselves in a terrifying limbo. Beloved truly despised her hateful spouse and absolutely intended to divorce her, but nothing was ever finalized because her spouse dragged her feet. 
Beloved clearly intended to change her will to provide for partner and me, but never lived to do it. We are now apparently, if legal aid is to be believed, the tenants of Beloved's would be X, which cannot be legal or ethical given her animosity and prejudice towards us, and we must either pay the exorbitant, usurious rent she demands or be evicted from our own house. We are counting our small blessings that our state has put a moratorium on evictions. It isn't much, but we will take what crumbs the system throws our way. Sadly, it is due to expire on the first of the month, which mean one day we will have to face this woman in court and be her punching bags for all the world to see, because she is still so furious at a woman who is already dead. Questions, I hardly know where to start here, but given all of the above I suppose T have five questions, in relative order of importance. Do we have a cause of action against Beloved's spouse for stealing and burning her body and keeping the remains from us, given that they were on an inevitable path to divorce and Beloved absolutely would not have wanted her spouse to be anywhere near her, as evidenced by initiating the divorce process? If Beloved's spouse is truly our landlord now, how can we prevent her from evicting us or charging us an unconscionable rent? Even granting that she somehow became a landlord, should she not honor the implicit contract we had with Beloved, which stipulates that we may live in and use the house as we see fit? Is it legal to demand that your tenants buy their own house from you? What would be the best way for us to challenge and defeat Beloved's will, given that she intended for us to live in our house and that her spouse abandoned it? Do we expose ourselves to retaliatory charges if we file an ethics complaint against Beloved's spouse's attorney for deadnaming her? Thank you all for your assistance and for keeping an open mind. Thank you all for your assistance and for keeping an open mind. No, the marriage trumps whatever relationship you had. You cannot. They can evict you as per state law. They can make it a condition of continuing to rent to you. None. The will is legally binding. No. But this isn't going to go anywhere, especially if legal documents such as a will were still in the previous name. Thank you for your responses. Some follow-ups. But she was in the process of getting divorced. The marriage was already dead and rotting in the sun. Beloved's spouse actually couldn't evict us right now even if she were our landlord, because of the statewide moratorium. We never signed any agreement with this woman, nor would we ever. She cannot unilaterally impose this kind of obligation on us, it isn't fair. That's absurd. Really? I guess I should count myself lucky nowhere else I've ever lived has tried this. What if we showed the courts all the photos we took, letters we sent, declarations of love we made, and testified about how much beloved despised her spouse? Couldn't that establish intent and at least null the old will? He dead named beloved while she was still alive presenting as female, had undergone top surgery, and in the same room as him. That sounds like gross negligence to me, doesn't it? That doesn't legally matter. As soon as the moratorium is over, they can evict you. They can demand whatever they want. You don't have to buy it. No. No. But we never agreed to any kind of lease with her. She was never part of anything. She only swooped in, after she shrieked and hounded a woman to death, and is trying to unilaterally impose an unconscionable rent payment on us. This is tantamount to slavery. You can't stay for free in a house someone else owns and doesn't want you to stay in. You know that, right? Your partner and her wife own that house, and it looks like you all together with all your friends showed up and ejected the wife from her own house, an event you now call abandonment, terminology that doesn't matter because home ownership isn't tied to residing at the home, for X you reside there now, but you don't own it, and were apparently negotiating a buyout, which never happened. As long as one of the owners let you stay with her, you were fine to stay as her roommates. That is no longer the case. Dead naming is rude, it isn't illegal. Beloved owned it too, so even under that argument we do still have permission. Dead naming kills. He could have killed her. Murder is surely actionable, right? Sadly, though, I think you're right that this lawyer will never face justice. 
The deceased's invitation ended with their death. Literally the only legal reason the widow can't show up with a bunch of hired goons and kick you out of the house she owns are tenancy laws. Go ahead and shoot a person that has a lawful right to be on the property and isn't threatening your life or safety. That's not castle doctrine, that's manslaughter. Since you're thinking about it already, it could be considered murder. I finally have my house back, but my life will never be back to normal. Nor eight and a half months ago, my wife sent one of the men she'd been cheating on me with to my job with an illegal divorce decree to sign. That same night, the rest of her harem threw me out of my house and moved themselves in. Five months ago, she killed herself, and the two dipshits in chief who'd made themselves home in my house refused to leave, claiming the house was theirs. At the advice of my lawyer, I put on a magic hat that said I was a landlord and they were month-to-month -month tenants who wouldn't pay rent and did the song and dance routine of evicting people from my house. This was right around the time my state implemented a moratorium on evictions. So now in addition to being the kind of asshole who would evict someone, I was the kind of asshole who had to have laws passed to keep me from doing harm. And the dipshits in my house reveled in that. They were living for free in my house, that I was still paying the mortgage for, sending me regular death threats, while they hadn't even finished moving in all of their stuff from their old apartment and I was living in an unfurnished 1BR and sleeping on a pile of laundry because between all of the current and new expenses I couldn't afford a mattress, but I was that B. TCH and the DNK and the evil capitalist. And it wants just them saying that or making the threats, either. It was their friends and family, people who I'd thought had been my friends, random looky loos who saw their social media posts about it, and every now and then a garden variety asshole who was passing by. I cannot begin to describe how much it ducked me up to have an eviction under my belt, during a pandemic, as the evictor. I cannot begin to describe how much it ducked me up knowing the only way I could enforce the eviction order would be through calling the cops, after George Floyd. Or seeing the damage those two dipshits had done to my home. Or the utter shit show that actually getting them physically out of the house turned into. I have my house back. The people who took it from me are gone for now. Things are not and never will be back to normal, and in the end it almost certainly won't have been worth it, but this was the outcome that would have hurt me the least. Good for you though. You did the right things in a shitty situation. You were an evictor, but not because someone was choosing to rent from you, but because they were squatting. In. Your. House. Good luck. That second post was ridiculously insufferable. Edited for clarity. That second post, the comments are good, is insufferable and the stuff of legal nightmares. It wouldn't have been long before Sovereign Citizen came into it. I really liked the one comment about how North Carolina still allows for alienation of affection. I hope Op sues these assholes for damages. They did mention Castle Doctrine, which is creepy as hell. I'm glad the legal advice poster told them that since they're thinking about it it would probably be murder. What a nut job if it's all true. I also love how they said she wants the house back she abandoned while literally admitting earlier in the post that they kicked her out without notice. But they used the nicest luggage she had. Slash S. Reading the legal advice post they made, they are insufferable, whiny, ignorant, selfish and egotistical. It's a terrible thing to say, yet I can't help but think the deceased wife took her own life in part because of that person. That is what I took a whole long comment to say. They came into her life and they convinced her she was a victim and they made her a victim to perpetuate their narrative. Also, she was their ticket to Easy Street. They sound like con artists. Taking advantage of a vulnerable, obviously mentally unwell woman for their own gain. That was my takeaway. Their poly relationship sounds very much like a couple who wanted something more and convinced a vulnerable person who's battling with their sexuality and gender that they accept her as she is and everyone, including her wife, doesn't. I can understand how torn she was. That couple knew what they were doing and absolutely contributed to her death. 
and are pissed they can't get a house for free? We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.